Am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? I bumped into her in the small salon before. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I better hurry. Tell me, my good man. Yes, sir. Why are you standing in front of this door? I have been instructed to let no one enter. I'm wasting my time here. Lady Adams could return to her room at any minute. What a shame. I wonder what's going on inside. Will there be anything else, sir? Servants put clean laundry here. My son, oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, your eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug, a Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Government. You should do something, my son. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. Who do you think you are? Forget me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business! I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am! Stop! I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir! Uh, shit. Uh, if I step in, Adams might just run back uh, to her room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna uh, suffer. Damn it, what should I do? Uh, Let her go! Huh? Stay out of it, boy! 
shit. What are you playing at? I told you to mind your own business, boy. If you think you can side with this whore and then just walk away, you're out of your mind. Give me one good reason not to knock you down. <laughs> Sir, you obviously do not know who I am, or you'd keep your distance. Ooh, one more like that and I'm gonna get scared. Don't think you're getting away with it that easily. I'm sick of all these toffs. If we were in Paris, I'd send you all to the guillotine. And on top of it all, a woman telling me how I ought to behave? I won't stand for it. Oh, okay, okay, wait a minute. What? Don't tell me you're gonna defend these harlots. Cat got your tongue? I get the feeling you're trying to put one over on me. If that's the case, you're making a big mistake. Sorry about that. Look, there's no point in us aggravating each other. Let's both just go our separate ways. So move, we're not done yet. You wanted to be the knight in shining armor and save the damsel in distress. Let's see how brave you are. Listen, we barely know each other, and it seems everything went a bit too far. Let me apologize if I offended you in any way. What's wrong? Someone cut your balls off? You should have kept your big nose out! Bastard caught me dead to rights. Liam, you have failed me. I don't know what you were doing, but Elizabeth returned much too soon. Any earlier, and I would have been caught. I didn't get time to search through everything, but I did manage to find what I was looking for. The young lady really is John Adams' daughter. Signed, George Washington. Well done, Lee. The President of the United States asked for your assistance and you screwed up? Mother finds out, I... I get the feeling I'll never hear the end of it. Not for a few years, anyway. Now, what was I going to do last night? Ah, yes. Search the room. According to what I saw in my vision, this room was Mother's before I got it. Maybe she left something behind that will help me find her. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, 
this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Writing material. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? wasn't it? Not to mention I covered half the page with lemon juice. Great! Louis, Louis. Lemon's used to write secret messages, not to reveal them. I'll have to try something else. Damn, I'm making a serious mess here. It's no good. It might have worked if the writing had left marks in the paper, but no, there's only traces of lemon. Luckily, I've only put ash on part of the message. So it wasn't that, and I've just stained half the page. Ink is always used to write a message, never to reveal one. I must find something else. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Well, I think I've searched everywhere. Maybe I should try it out on the book. Aha! It's working! The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute.
Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. It might be better to take a different stairway. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Same as everyone else. I accepted Lord Mortimer's invitation. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes. I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right. I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already. I... I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Don't you have a brother? I have three, but not one of them has bothered to help me. Charles and Thomas were kept away from me to make sure I wouldn't upset them. As for John, the only time he visited me was to make me swear to never publicly compromise his career. Sorry, I... I didn't know. You're an only son, right? Does it show? If you had a brother or sister, you'd know the way blood ties are unbreakable. Except in my family, unfortunately. Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. I've got nothing more to say to you. Figure it out yourself.
What do you want? If you touch Elizabeth again, I promise, when you get back to Paris, your head will end up on a spike. Please stop, you're scaring me. I'm a member of the tribunal. You shouldn't threaten me like that. And I'm a member of the Golden Order, with all the contacts in the Paris press that implies. One word for me, and you'll be headline news. A full page dedicated to your little stay here. So what? Wipe your ass with it. Your revolutionary friends are sure to be delighted reading about your new friendships with all these rich nobles on the island. The thought of you here, lapping up all this luxury, I'm sure they'll congratulate you for profiting from your position. You bastard. I forbid you to blackmail You're me. You're in no position to forbid me from anything. So you'd better remember what I said. Dear friends, I bid you... Welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing it? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Oh, monsieur, of course. You must be sure. <laughs> And you, sir? Fifteen years ago. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible ah. headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> yes, that's it. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely! If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> what do you think of Volner? Many believe he is the real leader of Prussia. A charming man, but with an iron fist and a velvet glove. I also know he's famous for his love of the hunt in all its forms. That's right. The 
Yes, he has. He's done <laughs> My friend. Oh, dear. Have you <laughs> any information on this Napoleon? Not really, no. Thank you, Jimmy Lawrence. He's just a soldier. Not even a high-ranking one at that. I'll bet he's just here for some minor business. I wouldn't be so categorical. No one is ever invited here just by chance. You'll see. Uh, please, go ahead. Oh. Um, what do you want to know? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common Ooh, interests. Could we speak in private, please? <laughs> ah. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. Absolutely. 50,000 louis d'or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 louis d'or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. It is remarkable. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Let the people make their own choices. You are joking, I hope. The people are simply not capable of taking charge, don't you see? They are an uneducated mob who react on the spur of the moment, incapable of providing a coherent vision for the good of the country. <laughs> I think there must be a misunderstanding. What do you mean? I cannot believe that Lord Mortimer advised me to speak to you. I must have misunderstood. Excuse me, please. Bravo, Louis. Total fiasco. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington.
right. We shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Hey, Emily, you scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I was feeling a bit peckish. I went in search of the kitchen and I ended up here. Your sense of direction is mind boggling, isn't it? Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. In your dreams. At your service, madam. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine. Hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia. Properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old, and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. 
I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? These documents must be fakes. No man can own that many original works, no matter how rich he is. Be careful. The Order has tried many times to estimate his personal wealth without ever succeeding. And look here. Castles in Scotland, vineyards in Italy, districts in Venice. He's richer than some European countries. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Mortimer's collection is unique, isn't it? That's an understatement. No doubt he has a major passion for history and fine art, or getting gifts. If each time Mortimer does someone a favor, they reward him with a priceless gift, that means he must have helped nearly everybody in the world. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met, Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? At least this way, things are clear. How do you expect me to open up to you at all if you can't even reassure me? Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese, but I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone, you have your strengths and your weaknesses, and there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? It's obvious to me that whenever anyone seriously questions you, you start to lose your footing. It's not a big deal in and of itself, but we can help each other when that happens. Together, we'll be much stronger. My dear Louis, you're very kind, but you are completely mistaken. I have no problem whatsoever dealing with being questioned. I'm sorry to tell you, but you read me badly. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Oh, it's crystal clear. You don't like people telling you what to do, and you do like giving the orders to everyone. If I were the matron you speak of, I would have found an underling to search this place, and I would be sound asleep in my bed. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me, but I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... Chances are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order other than ourselves are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. 
Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our order communicates internationally. Right, time is... You haven't convinced me. I prefer to remain discreet. Don't take it the wrong way. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. And if I reacted so strongly at the sight of the cameo pendant, it's because I thought... belong to her, but it doesn't. I understand. I won't insist. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your... Same here. Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth. How can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. All right, what have you got on your mind now? You've got to listen to what I have to say while there's still time. You need to know the truth about your mother. About my mother? What do you mean? I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognize my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis, I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you it was her. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. No thanks, I, I'd better not. Listen, if you want me to tell you everything, you have to drink with me, Louis. What I have to say to you is of the utmost importance. No, I won't drink. All right, Louis, then get the hell out of here. You're incapable of opening your eyes, so be it. Get out!
Why the hell did I go with Elizabeth? I could have spent the night with Emily, but no. I had to go play the night with a big heart. Oh, well, never mind. Tomorrow's another day. I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. What the hell's going on? You are in deep trouble, my young friend. <laughs> 